this is Mrs. Howard, and today we're going to model a molecule using the FET simulation. For step number one, we're going to open the simulator and explore. So on page 11 of your interactive notebook, click this link and it will open the simulator. We're going to use the molecule side of the simulator choices. Once you're in the simulator, click this down arrow and take a look at the different choices of molecules that you can interact with. Play around with the molecules and see what they do in this 3D space. After you've looked at all of them, pick your favorite one. We're going to use that one to create our model. When you've found one you like, you're ready to move to step two, and that's adding the molecule to a Jamboard. So to begin, snip the image using the snipping tool on your computer. For the Chromebook, that's Control, Shift, and the symbol over the number six. Next, go to remove.bg because we're going to remove the background to that image. So take the image that you just snipped and upload it to remove.bg. There you'll see the blue background removed. Then click download to download it to your computer. We're now going to add that image to a Jamboard. So to access Jamboard, you click on the waffle sign in the upper right hand corner of your screen, scroll down a bit, and then find the Jamboard icon. To start a new Jamboard, click the plus sign in the lower right hand corner. Now we're going to add the molecule with the background removed. So go ahead and click the image button and select the file from your computer. If you need to, stretch and position the molecule onto the middle of your page. We're now ready to research the elements and the symbol that make up this molecule. To do that, please go to ptable.com. There, you need to find the two symbols that were on the simulator. In my case, I have a P and a CL. So when I find them on the periodic table, those are going to tell me the names of the atoms that make up this molecule. In the case of my molecule, the first symbol I located was a P, and that stands for phosphorus on this periodic table. The second symbol was a CL, and that stands for chlorine. So my molecule is made up of phosphorus and chlorine. The next thing I have to determine is which of these spheres represents the phosphorus and which represents the chlorine. You can see at the top there is one P, and there is only one sphere that is orange, so that's actually the phosphorus. Over here it says C, L, and 5. There are five green spheres, so I can determine that these five represent the chlorine. Now that I know I have phosphorus and chlorine in my molecule, I need to know what it's actually called. And to do that, I'm going to Google the name of the molecule that's listed up here. So in Google, I'm actually going to type the letters and the number that's listed under the molecule. And this is called phosphorus pentachloride, which sounds very complicated. But all I'm going to do is I'm going to just copy that name so that I have it for my Jamboard. And now I'm ready to title and label the molecule in my Jamboard. So phosphorus pentachloride was the name that I copied over from that website. I'm just going to enlarge it and center it because we know that models must have titles. The second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add the PCL5 label that's included on the sim. I'm just going to type that in below the title of the molecule. Molecules are made up of atoms or elements. I know that my molecule is made up of phosphorus and chlorine. I determined that the five CLs are chlorine, so I'm going to label all five of these green spheres as chlorine in my molecule. I also learned that the P in my molecule stands for phosphorus, and so I'm going to label that orange section a phosphorus. Now that your molecule is titled and labeled, we're ready to move to step five, which is to show the atomic structure of the elements in our molecule. So for that, I'm going to create two zoom bubbles, one for the chlorine and one for the phosphorus. In a model, a zoom bubble is used to show a close-up look of something that's inside or maybe not visible. In the case of our atoms, phosphorus and chlorine, they have protons, neutrons, electrons, and a nucleus that make them up. This is their atomic structure. And we need to show that atomic structure inside the zoom bubbles that we've created. To add an image of the atomic structure of each of your elements, we're going to use chemicalelements.com. And when you get to the website, you're going to click on your element as it's shown in the periodic table. And right click and save the image of the atomic structure of your element. 
Do the same thing for each of the elements in your molecule. Click on the element in the periodic table, right click and save the atomic structure as an image. When you've saved the atomic structure for each of your elements, go back to your Jamboard, use the image tool, and then select the file to upload it. Reduce it in size and put it in place. Make sure you put the correct atomic structure with the correct element on your model. Once that's finished, you're ready to save your Jamboard. Select the three dots in the upper right hand corner and save frame as image, and then copy that image to the clipboard. Here, we're gonna go back to our notebook page and we're gonna add that Jamboard that we created. The easiest way to do this is to use the Control V shortcut key, which stands for paste. So paste that image onto your page and then size it to fit. Finally, there's one last task for you to complete. In the Note and Notice section, write your observations about the molecule in the simulator. What kind of things did you see when you looked at it or played with it? In the case of mine, I noted that there were five green spheres that represent chlorine atoms. I learned that one orange sphere is a phosphorus atom. And I'm also going to record an observation that I made that I don't necessarily have the science knowledge for yet. So hopefully you've modeled a unique molecule from the simulator using this tutorial. Good luck!